So my name is João Pedro Brasileiro, and as my name suggests, you might already know that I'm going to talk about the Brazilian market. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about like the, the hidden opportunities that we have, and I'd like to start with this chart. So this chart tells a little bit about how fast the Brazilian market is growing. Until 2017, we didn't have any unicorn in our ecosystem. And then last year, we had the boom. Six new unicorns. Who is the new unicorn that we have now? Nubank, it's a fintech. I'm going to talk uh, about them later. Uh, we have Arco, that is focused on the education system. We have 99, or 99. That is Uber competitor, like they, they have rides and taxis and etc. Movili, it's uh, Uber, food, Uber Eats competitor. We have Stone, that is focused on payments. And we also have Gym Pass, that is like uh, corporate benefits focused on gym uh, for exercise and, and etc. cetera. Um, how did you get here? How, how did the Brazilian market got so big, and not only the Brazilian market, but also the Latin American market, but talking more about the, the my country opportunity? We got here because of the market that we have, the market size, and the disruption opportunity. You might read disruption opportunity as the big problems that we have in our country as well. So talking a little bit more about the marketing size. We are a 210 million population. And in this population, we have 71% of people with mobile phones, smartphones, with access to the internet. So if we multiply it, we would have it 149 million people connected to the internet through their mobile phone in Brazil. Uh, John, in the, first, in the first lecture here, was telling that we have 35 million people living in Canada. So it will be four, ti four times uh, the, uh, the, amount, the number of people that lives in Canada. If we if you would like to compare with like uh, Mexico, Mexico has around 140 million people. So we have only connected to the internet uh, a population bigger than Mexico. Mexico is the 10th biggest country when you talk about uh, number of people. There's another point regarding the Brazilian ecosystem that is our population is really engaged in digital uh, channels. We are the second main country that most use internet. To let you know, an average person uses the internet nine hours a day. This is like way higher than China, Russia, US. So we are really into uh, digital channels. We're talking about like those big companies here. We are number five in Google. So uh, on Twitter, we are number six in position. LinkedIn, number three. We are the third country with more access. YouTube, we are the second one. Facebook, we are the third one. And Instagram, we are the second one as well. So with this, you might understand now why there are so many companies focused not only in the Brazilian market, but also in the Latin American market. All of this uh, opportunity, it, worth to mention, uh, it happens in a scenario that uh, the Brazilian market, or the Brazilian population, or Brazilian country, doesn't have a well-known uh, speed internet access. So we're kind of below the, the global average, but still, we have a lot of people like uh, getting connect every day and, uh, and, and using those main, uh, those main applications worldwide. And we talk about, when we talk about disruption slash problems, we have five main sectors in Brazil uh, for a startup to work on. The first one is education. We have a lot of problems with education. The, the drop off hate from school is really high. And with this, we have like startups uh, creating uh, gamification for the process of learning. And it has the focus to keep the students in class. So this is, again, a, a good opportunity. Uh, if, you, if you take a look in, in, the, in the global rank, Brazil is not well positioned. So again, uh, new startups are coming uh, to help in the sector. We have the retail sector. Although we are a big country, 
only 3% of the purchase are made online. And we have 71%, remember, of people with mobile phones with access to internet. So as we teach people how easy it is, how fast it is to buy online, this is going to be a big opportunity. And there is another point. Brazilians love shopping. So uh, it's a well opportunity as well. When we talk about health, a few info, and how startups could help. Uh, in the last five years, the cost to keep and maintain any health care plan have multiplied by two. So it's getting more expensive than the GDP growth in Brazil. Um, we are also like in a, a blue, Bloom, uh, Bloomberg has a ranking regarding like the situation of healthcare in, in, in 56 uh, different countries. Like how easy it is, uh, uh, how it works, like the potential. Brazil is in position 51. So we are in a really bad position, although we have like the, larger, the largest market in Latin America as well. Oh, when you talk ag about agriculture. So uh, for the Brazilian market, agriculture is like the backbone of the economy. Uh, during like the, the worst crisis that we've been in the last year, agriculture was the sector that was maintaining us on the road. Although we had uh, a decrease in our GDP in 3.5%, the ag sector was still growing and uh, with rates of uh, 3% a year. So it is an important sector, it's not, not only for Brazil, Argentina as well uh, have a really important uh, uh, market in the, in the, ag, in the ag sector. And we can talk about banking. We consider banking or fintechs the main opportunity in Brazil. We had a very delicate situation in Brazil because 80% of the population have account in only five banks. So we have five main banks that kind of rule everything. On the other side, only 60% of the adult population has bank accounts. We have 40% of the population in Brazil without bank account, without access to uh, financial services. I'm going to remind you again, we have 71% of people with access to smartphones with internet. So why don't we have at least 71% of people with bank accounts, startups, fintechs? They are kind of disrupting everything, especially when you talk about this. We have good numbers as well, I have to tell you. 58% of the transactions are already made on digital channels. And I think in the last month, mo mobile channel have passed the uh, desktop slash tablet operation. So I think we're making to the 71%. We have 7 million people that already have digital bank accounts. Talking about Nubank, the unicorn, first unicorn that I mentioned in my third slide or something like this. So Nubank started his operation in late 2013, beginning of 2014. And what they, are, they, they started as a credit card, and then they were moving and getting more clients. So they start to have operation as digital bank accounts, reward, reward programs, and etc. And they are different from the traditional banks that we have in Brazil. Uh, there is no branches, no branches, there is no fee, and they have an excellent uh, customer service. Like the, the, the A class and the B class in Brazil, like they are like well served by all of the banks that we have. Like people with money, of course the banks will look up to provide a good service for them. But not the others. So New Bank found a way uh, in this particularity. And just to let you know, before, like, l although they are a startup, they, they, they deal a lot with the clients in, with the offline channels, such as mobile phone. And when a client opens uh, a problem in the in, in a bank, uh, their customer success analyst, as, 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 they, as they say, they even look up, like, in your social media to try to understand how should they treat you better. Like, you know, I'm going to look up for the LinkedIn. I'm trying to see who's the person or who this person is. What does he like so I can get a really good uh, treatment and personal treatment? Um, I was taking a look at their social media and there was a, an announcement like this. Hey, uh, during this weekend, we'll be updating a few stuff in our software. If you could not reach us out uh, through 
phone, it would be good because we won't be able to provide a good service. And I said, whoa, that was hard. That was hard. L let me check what people are, are, are saying about it. And it was like, hey, no worries. You have the best service that I ever had. I won't be calling you. Uh, for sure, I will deal with the situation without borrowing you. Have good luck in your system, up, in your system updates. And I was like, okay, <laughs> okay, that's good. And here's here's how, how they grew. Like you know, like all this, they don't they don't have clients. They have fans. They have a hashtag like so new is like I am new, and like everybody uses every time they got they got accepted. They had to change the design of the credit card. Let me see if this one is the new one. Yeah, this one is the new one. Because when people were receiving their credit cards, they were like taking pictures. You know, I just got my new bank card, hashtag so new, but this is a sensitive information. So they have to redesign all the card. <laughs> Hello, in order to take the number out. And they were like, hey, we have redesigned our card because you, we know that you like to post on social media. So now feel free to post on social media as you receive. This is how they spend money on marketing actions. As you can see, until, 2016, until 2017, they have spent only uh, around uh, $300,000 uh, $300, with actions. In the beginning of 2018, they became a unicorn. By that time, they had like 3 million clients, only, by the, uh, only with the referral program. You know, this is, this is how constructing a brand it is. Now they are spending plan of money and marketing actions, they are like um, destroying the traditional bank in Brazil. This is just a, a print that I had. Uh, Mercado Livre or Mercado Libre uh, is like a marketplace in Brazil. Uh, that they have in Brazil and all over Latin America, of course, it's, the, it's an Argentina one. And, and I was looking for no new bank stuff on the internet and then I found a page in the in Mercado Libre and people were selling referral you know just you have to buy so uh, as a client of nubank I, ca I can uh, refer like 10 friends to use nubank so i will have like a faster evaluation in order to get into the bank so people start to sell it and they were selling like for six highs that would be like two dollars like two dollars to send an email and they were like they were highlighting like free shipping there was no shipping in a in, in this process and just to let you know this one here so 28 that one, the green one, that worked a little bit more in the design, have sold 50. So they're making money just like suggesting. It, it is a market right now. And Nubank now is, is opening his operation in Mexico. Like they're growing up. They understood that there is a lot of similarities in the, in the markets. And not only in the financial markets, we have a lot of markets that look the same in Latin America, such as when you talk about the egg sector, Brazil and Argentina, they are they are they are very good at they are very good at it. When you talk about financial problems like uh, bancarization and etc., we have Mexico, Brazil, Peru, all in kind of the same situation. And taking this, uh, we have launched a platform called Innovation Awards Latin that has the intention to bring together all the Latin American um, ecosystem. And as Ingrid was saying here, uh, you have to expose your solution uh, to other countries in order to understand what would be your next step. You, you can plan everything. So with, with this platform that we built, we are, we are putting together startups, big companies, venture capital, government, and experts uh, to interact in one solution that has an online platform a, and offline actions. We have events in the main cities in Latin America. Um, we have also an award that is called Innovation Awards Latin. That is the name of the project where we invite all the startups from Latin America to, to apply their cases. And then we send all those cases to judges that we invite from all over the world, like for real. Like we have 29 countries participating, countries from uh, Latin America as well, but such as Canada, US, Japan, uh, Israel, Spain, like we have the main countries that they're focused on internet, uh, on startups participating. And we create this connection when we have judges reading the cases of the startups and after that they, they, they can get in touch with the startups. 
we have now a program with big companies where big companies can interact with the Latin American ecosystem in one action. There are, actual, there are actions focused on branding, but more, more importantly, we have open innovation actions where we put startups to help companies to solve their day-to-day -day, uh, business problems. Just to be fast here, in order to finalize, those are, those are like the steady sustainable growth numbers that we've been we've been we've been uh, showing, because as you can see, like we are growing the number of startups, we are growing the number of countries participating, because it shows the value that we are bringing and taking to everybody that gets into our platform. We are generating new business. Here are some of our partners. We are currently uh, open for the Innovation Awards Latin. Those are the categories that we are looking for. So FinTechs, Retail tax, Agro, Prop, Social Impact, best category, Smart Cities, Ad tax, and Health tax. Uh, for the Latin Conf, we made a special code. So there is a cost to participate. But if you use, if your startup use the Latin Startups Conf code, it will be for free until the end of the competition. OK? So if you have any doubt, my contact is over there. And it was a pleasure to present you the Brazilian market. Thank you.